Hello, welcome to Meditating the Word. I'm so glad you're here as we journey through the Bible this year. If you'd like to download a copy of the reading plan, it's from blueletterbible.com. You'll find a link in the notes. I'll be reading from the World English Bible. We are three months in. If you haven't subscribed to this podcast yet, why not do that now? Just click on subscribe so you don't miss any episodes. This is Day 90. Today we are reading from the Book of Judges. The Book of Judges, chapters 3 through 5. Now these are the nations which the Lord left to test Israel by them, even as many as had not known all the wars of Canaan, only that the generations of the children of Israel might know to teach them war, at least those who knew nothing of it before. The five lords of the Philistines, all the Canaanites, the Sidonians, and the Hivites who lived on Mount Lebanon, from Mount Baal Hermon to the entrance of Hamath, they were left to test Israel by them, to know whether they would listen to the Lord's commandments, which he commanded their fathers by Moses. The children of Israel lived among the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. They took their daughters to be their wives, and gave their own daughters to their sons, and served their gods. The children of Israel did that which was evil in the Lord's sight, and forgot the Lord their God, and served the Baals and the Asherah. Therefore, the Lord's anger burned against Israel, and he sold them into the hand of Cushan Rishathaim, king of Mesopotamia. And the children of Israel served Cushan Rishathaim eight years. When the children of Israel cried to the Lord, the Lord raised up a savior to the children of Israel who saved them. Even Othniel, the son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother, The Lord's Spirit came on him, and he judged Israel, and he went out to war. And the Lord delivered Kishan Rishaphaim, king of Mesopotamia, into his hand. His hand prevailed against Kishan Rishaphaim. The land had rest forty years. Then Othniel, the son of Kenaz, died. The children of Israel again did that which was evil in the Lord's sight. And the Lord strengthened Eglon, the king of Moab, against Israel, because they had done that which was evil in the Lord's sight. He gathered the children of Ammon and Amalek to himself, and he went and struck Israel, and they possessed the city of palm trees. The children of Israel served Eglon, the king of Moab, eighteen years. But when the children of Israel cried to the Lord, the Lord raised up a savior for them, Ehud, the son of Gera, the Benjamite, a left-handed man. The children of Israel sent tribute by him to Eglon, the king of Moab. Ehud made himself a sword, which had two edges, a cubit in length, and he wore it under his clothing on his right thigh. He offered the tribute to Eglon, king of Moab. Now Eglon was a very fat man. When Ehud had finished offering the tribute, he sent away the people who carried the tribute. But he himself turned back from the stone idols that were at Gilgal and said, I have a secret message for you, O king. The king said, Keep silence. All who stood by him left him. Ehud came to him, and he was sitting by himself alone in the cool upper room. Ehud said, I have a message from God to you. He arose out of his seat. Ehud put out his left hand and took the sword from his right thigh and thrust it into his body. The handle also went in after the blade, and the fat closed on the blade, for he didn't draw the sword out of his body and it came out behind. Then Ehud went out onto the porch, 
and shut the doors of the upper room on him and locked them. After he had gone, his servants came and saw that the doors of the upper room were locked. They said, Surely he is covering his feet in the upper room. They waited until they were ashamed, and behold, he didn't open the doors of the upper room. Therefore, they took the key and opened them, and behold, their Lord had fallen down dead on the floor. Ehud escaped while they waited, and passed beyond the stone idols, and escaped to Sierra. When he had come, he blew a trumpet in the hill country of Ephraim, and the children of Israel went down with him from the hill country, and he led them. He said to them, Follow me, for the Lord has delivered your enemies, the Moabites, into your hand. They followed him, and took the fords of the Jordan against the Moabites, and didn't allow any man to pass over. They struck at that time about ten thousand men of Moab, every strong man and every man of valor. No man escaped. So Moab was subdued that day under the hand of Israel. Then the land had rest eighty years. After him was Shamgar, the son of Anath, who struck six hundred men of the Philistines with an ox goad. He also saved Israel. The children of Israel again did that which was evil in the Lord's sight when Ehud was dead. The Lord sold them into the hand of Jabin, king of Canaan, who reigned in Hazor, the captain of whose army was Sisera, who lived in Herosheth of the Gentiles. The children of Israel cried to the Lord, for he had nine hundred chariots of iron, and he mightily oppressed the children of Israel for twenty years. Now Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidoth, judged Israel at that time. She lived under Deborah's palm tree between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim, and the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. She sent and called Barak, the son of Babinoam, out of Kadesh Naphtali, and said to him, Hasn't the Lord, the God of Israel, commanded, Go and lead the way to Mount Tabor, and take with you ten thousand men of the children of Naphtali and of the children of Zebulun? I will draw to you, to the river Kishon, Sisera, the captain of Jabin's army, and his chariots, and his multitude, and I will deliver him into your hand. Barak said to her, If you will go with me, then I will go. But if you will not go with me, I will not go. She said, I will surely go with you, nevertheless. The journey that you take won't be for your honor, for the Lord will sell Sisera into a woman's hand. Deborah arose and went with Barak to Kadesh. Barak called Zebulun and Naphtali together to Kadesh. Ten thousand men followed him, and Deborah went up with him. Now Heber the Kenite had separated himself from the Kenites, even from the children of Hobab, Moses' brother-in-law, and had pitched his tent as far as the oak in Za'ananim, which is by Kadesh. They told Sisera that Barak, the son of Abinoam, had gone up to Mount Tabor. Sisera gathered together all his chariots even nine hundred chariots of iron, and all the people who were with him, from Herosheth of the Gentiles to the river Kishon. Deborah said to Barak, Go, for this is the day in which the Lord has delivered Sisera into your hand. Hasn't the Lord gone out before you? So Barak went down from Mount Tabor, and ten thousand men after him. The Lord confused Sisera, all his chariots, and all his army with the edge of the sword before Barak. Sisera abandoned his chariot and fled away on his feet. But Barak pursued the chariots and the army to Herosheth of the Gentiles, and all the army of Sisera 
fell by the edge of the sword. There was not a man left. However, Sisera fled away on his feet to the tent of Jael, the wife of Heber the Kenite. For there was peace between Jabin the king of Hazor and the house of Heber the Kenite. Jael went out to meet Sisera and said to him, Turn in, my lord, turn in to me, don't be afraid. He came in to her into the tent, and she covered him with a rug. He said to her, Please, give me a little water to drink, for I am thirsty. She opened a container of milk and gave him a drink and covered him. He said to her, Stand in the door of the tent, and if any man comes and inquires of you and says, Is there any man here? You shall say no. Then Jael, Heber's wife, took a tent peg and took a hammer in her hand and went softly to him and struck the pin into his temples, and it pierced through into the ground, for he was in a deep sleep. So he fainted and died. Behold, as Barak pursued Sisera, Jael came out to meet him and said to him, Come, and I will show you the man whom you seek. He came to her, and behold, Sisera lay dead, and the tent peg was in his temples. So God subdued Jabin, the king of Canaan, before the children of Israel on that day. The hand of the children of Israel prevailed more and more against Jabin, the king of Canaan, until they had destroyed Jabin, king of Canaan. Then Deborah and Barak, the son of Abinoam, sang on that day, saying, Because the leaders took the lead in Israel, because the people offered themselves willingly, be blessed, O Lord. Hear, you kings, give ear, you princes. I, even I, will sing to the Lord. I will sing praise to the Lord, the God of Israel. The Lord, when you went out of Seir, when you marched out of the field of Edom, the earth trembled, the sky also dropped. Yes, the clouds dropped water, the mountains quaked at the Lord's presence, even Sinai at the presence of the Lord, the God of Israel. In the days of Shamgar, the son of Anath, in the days of Jael, the highways were unoccupied, the travelers walked through byways, the rulers ceased in Israel. They ceased until I, Deborah, arose, until I arose a mother in Israel. They chose new gods. Then war was in the gates. Was there a shield or spear seen among 40,000 in Israel? My heart is toward the governors of Israel, who offered themselves willingly among the people. Bless the Lord. Speak. You who ride on white donkeys, you who sit on rich carpets, and you who walk by the way, far from the noise of archers in the places of drawing water, there they will rehearse the Lord's righteous acts, the righteous acts of his rule in Israel. Then the Lord's people went down to the gates. Awake, awake, Deborah, awake, awake, utter a song. Arise, Barak, and lead away your captives, you son of Abinoam. Then a remnant of the nobles and the people came down. The Lord came down for me against the mighty. Those whose root is in Amalek came out of Ephraim. After you, Benjamin, among your peoples, governors come down out of Mekir. Those who handle the marshal's staff came out of Zebulun. The princes of Issachar were with Deborah, as was Issachar. So was Barak. They rushed into the valley at his feet by the watercourses of Reuben. There were great resolves of heart. Why did you sit among the sheepfolds to hear the whistling for the flocks? As the watercourses of Reuben, there were great searchings of heart. Gilead lived beyond the Jordan. Why did Dan remain in ships? Asher sat still at the haven of the sea and lived by his creeks. 
Zebulun was a people who jeopardized their lives to the death. Naphtali also, on the high places of the field. The kings came and fought. Then the kings of Canaan fought at Ta'anak, by the waters of Megiddo. They took no plunder of silver. From the sky, the stars fought. From their courses, they fought against Sisera. The river Kishon swept them away. That ancient river, the river Kishon. My soul, march on with strength. Then the horse hoofs stamped because of the prancing, the prancing of their strong ones. Curse Meraz, said the Lord's angel. Curse bitterly its inhabitants, because they didn't come to help the Lord, to help the Lord against the mighty. Jael shall be blessed above women, the wife of Heber the Kenite. Blessed shall she be above women in the tent. He asked for water. She gave him milk. She brought him butter in a lordly dish. She put her hand to the tent peg and her right hand to the workman's hammer. With the hammer, she struck Sisera. She struck through his head. Yes, she pierced and struck through his temples. At her feet, he bowed. He fell. He lay. At her feet, he bowed. He fell. Where he bowed, there he fell down, dead. Through the window she looked out and cried. Sisera's mother looked through the lattice. Why is his chariot so long in coming? Why do the wheels of his chariots wait? Her wise ladies answered her. Yes, she returned answer to herself. Have they not found? Have they not divided the plunder? A lady, two ladies, to every man. To Sisera, a plunder of dyed garments a plunder of dyed garments embroidered, of dyed garments embroidered on both sides, on the necks of the plunder. So let all your enemies perish, O Lord, but let those who love him be as the sun when it rises in its strength. Then the land had rest forty years. Father God, thank you for your word, and thank you for the lessons of bravery and faithfulness, not only of the mighty men of valor, but of courageous women like Deborah and Jael, who rose up against your enemies. They weren't afraid to fight for you. May we be as strong and courageous as they were, and stand strong against the enemy today. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Did you know we're on Facebook? You can join our community there and share your thoughts about today's reading. You'll find a link in the notes. There are difficult passages in the book of Judges about the disobedience of Israel and the consequences for disobedience. But stick with it. Your faithfulness in reading God's Word will be rewarded. If you know someone who would enjoy reading the Bible with us, why not invite them to join us? And please take just a moment to rate and review this podcast. I want to thank you for joining me, and please know that I'm praying for you as we journey through the Bible together. I can't wait to see you tomorrow. Until next time, be blessed and be a blessing.